Well, listen to this video for a second, and then <laughs> we'll then we'll uh, then we'll we'll go from there. All right, it's fifty eight seconds long. Our country faces a clear choice. You want to match? I know the last year, a few years have been tough. It's a choice between two different philosophies and two different futures. Carnage and darkness and despair. A choice between soaring inflation and skyrocketing energy costs, or affordable rents and gas and groceries for you and your family. Too much of what's happening in our country today is not normal. This is a choice between whether we have an open border or a secure border. These are hard things. A choice between protecting criminals or protecting law-abiding Americans. Fear and lies. Republicans have a plan for a new direction that will get our country back on track. Our plan is a commitment to America. Okay, I have lots of thoughts on this. First, I really find it funny that the interstate, they, they, all the Biden scenes were from the, um, that one speech. Independence Hall first, speech. Independent yeah. Hall, which is like the best thing he did in his president when it came to speeches. Like yes. that was, that was an amazing speech. Like his possibly his best speech ever. Um, so yeah, that's the wrong speech to point to. It also didn't entirely match up to what they were saying. And here's the other thing you have to understand, like with, with the Republicans, every time they're trying to take back the house, they're all part of doing that uh, that Gingrich idea, whether like the um, the New Deal to Americans or whatever the fuck he called it, except when you actually look at what happened, like they were slate, like he unveiled that like ten minutes before the election happened. Like that yeah, that's not what they campaigned on at all. Yeah, it's not. And you know what? The other thing to that um, that that uh, and this is a very key point. You know what was missing in that uh, that that uh, video? A plan. Yeah. There was not a single policy point that, and that's like, this is, and this is funny because this may be the only right thing Benny Johnson said. Um, he said the reason that they lost is because there was no clips of Kevin McCarthy, like laying down smack to like, to have a policy point or something that could go viral. That's true because that's what Kevin McCarthy is. Cause he can't go viral because they don't have any type of policies. Like this is, look, we can harp on this all day. There is zero policy positions. Like if you think that they're going to do, or like even the things he's saying that are a difference between law abiding and, and secure borders. Let's talk about, let's break some of these things down. So he said, um, law abiding Americans and criminals. Well, the former president of the United States is a well-known criminal and is currently under investigation uh, for like six different things, um, including, uh, now being under a special counsel investigation, which Marjorie Taylor Greene said that she could potentially defund somehow, but I don't know if that's true or not. Anyway, um, they're going to defend that, but they like they don't like they're going to be pushing for uh, retribution for the January six people, the people who got prosecuted for that. Um, there's also yes, there's red state matter problem that forty percent, uh, the the top ten states with the um, uh with the highest murder rate is, is yeah eight the, of them are red eight of the top 10 states with highest crime per capita are red right and that's because look crime is not just a policy well crime is a policy issue um a lot of times the reason those are and i, I think i remember this exact article uh it points out to the fact that the reason these states have higher crime rates is because they're generally underfunded um, they don't have good schools, they don't have good social safety nets, and they don't have good paying jobs, which leads people to crime. Sure. Because um, poverty, poor health um, are correlated with crime. And that goes to show, I mean, so I'm, I'm, I, I just finished a script for, it'll be my first scripted video essay. Uh, I don't know how long it'll be because I haven't done the, the run through yet. And, and just as a preview, I make this point, you know, the fact of the matter is, the Republican Party, and, th and this is kind of the theme and what we're about to get into, uh, where I wanted to tee this up, was the Republican Party is not a serious governing party. And people, by and large, d just they say they expect them to be, but they very often don't hold their feet to the fire. It goes back to that double standard where Democrats are expected to do everything um, and, and do everything perfectly, whereas a Republican can be competitive against a Democrat uh, because of systemic advantages and lower expectations, um, and they don't have to do shit. And 
if you look at it, look at red states. I know people will say, well, what about Florida? What about Texas? Well, they have their problems, number one, number two. But the fact of the matter is, on average, red states trail blue states in terms of health, education, uh, safety, uh, weight, right? Because uh, unfortunately, red states tend to be heavier, um, all kinds of issues. And by the way, red states are much more likely to require federal subsidies to function. Talk about fiscal responsibility. Most states that rely the most on the teat of the federal government are red states. So you want to talk about governance and policy? By and large, there are some exceptions in some areas, but by and large, Republicans suck at running things. Suck at it. Like, it's just a fact. This is the, and, and of course, people like Ben Shapiro try to spin it the other way around. Oh, California is such a hellscape. Oh, blah, blah, blah. New York's such a hellscape. You gotta, and certainly blue states have their issues. There's no doubt about it. But overall, they tend to be high, they tend to be better educated. They tend to be less poor. They tend to be healthier. Uh, uh, just all these things. Metric, and they tend to be safer per capita as well. Um, but the reason I want to play that clip from McCarthy was, so that was a rare moment, as vague as it was. He and that was actually an excerpt of a broader speech that he gave in, I think it was Scranton. It wasn't it wasn't Scranton, sorry, it was somewhere in Pennsylvania. Um, he, that was his commitment to America speech. And he, it, it was a speech in which he said, look, you know, we have a plan. Didn't exactly go into what it was, but, you know, we need to fight inflation. We need to lower the cost of living, lower the cost of gas. We need to make America safer. We need to have a future built on freedom. So it was like this mix of specific, not policy plans, but specific calls to action for policy, like fight inflation. That there's not a plan, but it's at least a specific item. Like we need to reduce inflation. Then it was mixed with a bunch of pl platitudes about making a future built on freedom, whatever the hell that means. But here's what I find so fucking funny about all of that. That was the first and only time, the closest the Republican Party ever came to offering any sort of affirmative policy agenda outside of defund <laughs> uh, Medicare, you know, sunset Medicare and these social safety programs. Um, and this is the very first thing that they did when they got the majority on Wednesday. Wednesday was when they secured their 218 seat minimum needed to take the, ma the majority in the House. What was the first congressional policy initiative they announced the next day on Thursday? A probe in, in Hunter Biden. So I just want to I want to watch this for just a second. Um, you know, again, for the, the benefit of the audience. Tell me if you can hear that. Biden, at the very least, has been dishonest yeah. with the American people. And we need to realize whether or not this administration's compromised because of Hunter Shady business dealing. So the purpose of our investigation moving forward in January, when we become the majority and I have subpoena power, is to determine whether or not Joe Biden is, in fact, compromised because of his family's shady business dealing. So that, that is James Comer, Republican out of Kentucky. He's going to run the House Oversight Committee, pledging to make the investigation into President Biden and his son uh, a top priority in the new Congress. Headline of today's New York Post, House Hunters, GOP vows to expose the Biden cash scheme. Ohio Republican Congressman Jim Jordan, he was there yesterday, currently ranking member of House Judiciary no, Committee. How Good morning to you. Thank you uh, for your time. I'm trying to find out. I'm, I'm trying to gain this. Say what? You might have wanted to put it on 1.5 instead of. I have it on 1.5. Uh, it was still too fast. I mean, I'm going to put it on 1.25, though, because I just I I do like to speed things up a little bit so we can get straight to the commentary on our part. Out. Um, he, mm -hmm. he, here's what I've come up with. Fill in the blanks and tell me where we're headed here. Uh, you will not subpoena a sitting president. That means Joe Biden uh, while he's in office. Uh, DOJ is not going to give you what you want. Uh, you could subpoena Hunter or Jim Biden, and they, they could either refuse that subpoena or they could take the fifth. How do you get at this story come January 3rd? Well, I think, yeah, I think uh, Congressman Comer has been, been clear. You, you look at the suspicious activity reports, and what's interesting, Bill, is for the first time, uh, the Biden administration changed the process and the protocols uh, around getting access to these suspicious activity reports. And understand, this is a report filed by a bank, a financial institution, to the Treasury Department. In previous administrations, in the Trump administration, Obama administration, Bush administration, Congress, congressional committees could have access to those and could see those. This administration said, no, 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 we're changing the policy. So there's 150 out there. It's been in the press, 150 out there on Hunter Biden, Jim Biden, and the Biden business family you know, family business operation, but the committee has only been able to see two. So uh, Congressman Comer, who will be Chairman Comer of the Oversight Committee, said, I want to see the other 148. So I don't know if he'll, if he'll go through the banks, the financial institutions to get access to that, or what he'll do, but I think that's probably where this thing starts. 
My overarching concern is the politics at the Justice Department. You cannot have a, a Justice Department that's political, because if you do, you no longer have what, what makes America the greatest country in the world. One of the things that makes us the greatest country ever is this idea that it's equal treatment under law, and we don't have that. So that's my overarching concern, and we know that the FBI, Mr. Tebold at the FBI, according to a whistleblower who went to Mr. Grassley, was suppressing information about the Hunter Biden story just days and weeks before the presidential election in 2020. And we know the FBI also went and talked to Facebook and said, be on the lookout for Russian disinformation. And that happened to be just timely, a uh, time at the same same time you had 51 former intel mm -hmm. officials write the now famous letter yeah, I that grant this you, has all yeah. the earmarks of Russian disinformation. I grant you there are a ton of questions out there. You got two years to do this. And they can run the clock on you. That must be a concern when you're trying to find an answer. Well, it's always a concern, particularly when they haven't been, they haven't complied with any of the requests from Mr. Comer that he's already sent. They've changed the process on access to suspicious activity reports and denied us a chance to do that when it was always been able to do that before. And now we learned yesterday that they set up some special office the Democrats have to come after Mr. Comer, Mr. McCarthy, myself, and to attack the, the people doing the investigation. So uh, what we're going to do is everything we can within the Constitution, uh -huh. do our duty to get the facts and the truth to the American people, because you don't change the politics at the DOJ if you first don't expose just how bad it's gotten and what, what really has been going on there. So that's part of our duty as members of Congress when we take the oath of office on January 3rd to uphold the Constitution. Part of our duty is to make sure the country gets the truth and the facts. Got We're it. committed to doing that. Uh, this might be your first witness. On with Sean Hannity last night, Tony Babalinski. It's uh, crazy that we're actually still talking about this two years after I've come public. A thousand percent Joe Biden is the big guy. Multiple whistleblowers have come forward with a whole trove of facts that corroborate everything I've said as well as add incremental information to it. And um, I think the American people are going to see those facts. I think they're going to be shocked by those facts. And uh, hopefully justice is served. Last comment. Hopefully justice is served. Well, Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I mean, think how the story has changed, Bill. When it first came out two years ago, it was, well, it's not his laptop. Then it was, well, maybe it's his laptop and it's Russian disinformation. And then it was, well, okay, it's, it's his laptop, it's not Russian disinformation, but Joe Biden wasn't involved. And now it's all the way to the point where Joe Biden knew about it, even though he said he didn't, but it didn't influence, the Politico said this yesterday, but it didn't influence his decision making. His son's business dealings had no impact on the decisions he made as president. Well, that's a long way from, I had no knowledge of my son's business operations and it was Russian disinformation. So the story has changed dramatically from the White House and from the Democrats. Our job is to get the facts Got and it. the truth for the American people. Does this start in January, yes or no? Mr. Comer indicated yesterday that he plans on starting right away. Frankly, it's okay. already started. That's why they, we yeah, issued the 30 page report that the, the committee put out yesterday. Jim Jordan, thank you for your time. We'll speak Thank again. You, Thank you. All right, Fresh, you want to weigh in on that? I have a lot to weigh on it. So first off, everything Bobolitsky said is a lie. Um, uh, just, just straight up. Uh, there is no evidence. First off, how do I have expense? So the laptop itself is Hunter Biden's. The files on the laptop are what's in dispute. There's a Washington Post and a, a Huffington Post article on this um, in March, I believe. That basically said, yeah, we can verify some of this, but like we can't verify all of this. These files are all over the place. They seem to be added and um, during our investigation, like it doesn't seem to be accurate. Um, again, there's some more news video goes into this way more about like how it actually might actually be a Russian disinformation thing. Um, anyway, uh, as for the um, just for what uh, Jim Jordan says. I have no idea about the changing in the rules. I'm I'm prone to believe that he's lying because he's Jim Jordan and he's talking. Um, but I, I, I don't actually know if there's a, a difference there. Yeah, um, his yeah. mouth is open. Just real quick, uh, to your point about the, the emails, the vast majority of the data, according to a forensic audit from the Washington Post, says uh, the vast majority of the data and most of the nearly 129,000 emails the hard drive contained could not be verified by either of the two security experts who reviewed the data for the post. So you are correct. Yeah, it's not like like it's they, there's never been any smoking gun. And also, like, let's let's be clear about this. The most that hunter biden is guilty of is nepotism um, and he's hardly alone and we'll come back to that about the trump thing by the way because i imagine that your next comment's going to be you know who else is guilty of nepotism so we'll we'll talk about the trump nepotism thing in a minute if you want to continue but, yeah like this should be important like you should be aware of what their priority is and it's this fucking witch hunt and and to the other point like um i forget what the name of the the fox house was he had a good point he's like they can just stall you out yeah you know when fucking um, Don McGahn had to, to talk to people for stuff he witnessed in 2016, 2018, 2019, like 
It was two years later. They don't have to answer you to get, like, get, get like, get fucked, man. That's a system. You've shown very well that you don't want to have talking about. And this is another thing too. Um, some of these people are probably under investigation anyway. And I'm talking about the de- Republicans for things that they have done in relationship to January 6th. They took Scott Perry's phone. There's a couple of them that were doing pardons that were involved in some of these things um, that that might be under investigation for a whole bunch of different stuff anyway. That maybe like like the you can't if you're under investigation and you're asking questions, especially if they, they do this for the January 6th stuff, they're not going to be able to tell you because you are a subject of the investigation. Like this is insanity and it's it's very clear that they're just going to make shit up for this like that's the problem and it's imperative for anybody outside of fox news because fox news is going to give a shit um to to point out the fact that this is just nonsense like the hunter biden laptop story doesn't actually tie hunter biden in dead because even if these deals happen it doesn't appear that or um these meetings happen that any substantial policies or money exchanges came from them. No. Um, and, and as a matter of fact, because this is the other thing. I mean, there's there's several things. I'm with you. Hunter, this, this will be, if they follow through with this, and I have no doubt that they will, this will be the fourth, fe- at least the fourth federal level investigation into Hunter Biden. This is huge. And again, the mainstream media very often doesn't do a good job of covering this as well. But this is really, really important. Number one. Hunter Biden was the subject of a congressional investigation already by Senate Republicans in 2020. Chuck Grassley and I think, um, oh, shit, who's the guy? Who's the Wisconsin senator? Man, I'm blanking on his. Huh? Ron Johnson? I think it was Ron Johnson. I know it was Chuck Grassley. I can't believe he fucking won. Yeah, I know. That's, That's a tragedy. That guy is just a goon of the highest order. But they did... A, an investigation into Homeland Security and the Finance Committees, uh, Senate uh, Homeland Security and Senate Finance Committees, uh, when Republicans still held the Senate before the 2020 election. They investigated Hunter Biden and his overseas dealings, and they were forced to conclude in their report that they had no evidence of wrongdoing. So that's one federal level investigation by a Republican Congress. It was just Benghazi all over again. They, they ran the numbers, they made a scandal about it, and then they were like, well, okay, we, we don't really have our smoking gun. Okay, number one. There was another federal level investigation which began under the Obama administration into Hunter Biden's taxes. And that's where we found that he had a $2 million tax liability, which he has since paid off. But that began under the Obama administration. So he wants to talk about the, politica- the politicization of the Department of Justice. Let's think about the integrity, the relative integrity at the bare minimum about Justice Department. Joe Biden was the sitting vice president for Barack Obama, but the Barack Obama Justice Department investigated the vice president's son. Compared to the Trump administration, that is an act of superhuman integrity. That the Which Obama also had. we know was targeted at his political opponents. Yes. Like we know this. We yes. know that we're looking at making up Antifa stuff. We know that part of the Time Warner deal it appears that they were trying to push it so Jeff Zucker resigned in order for that deal to go through. Like, we know that this is stuff that they have done. Right. And that's what I mean. You say there there were some there were plenty of ethical um, scandals under the Obama administration. I mean, you know, that, that we could get into. I mean, that's where the whole. Um, oh, Fast and Furious. Yes. Yes. But then who was the guy? He's in Russia now. Man, I'm blanking on his name. Oh, Edward Snowden. Snowden. Thank you. So, I mean, there's no question about it that that the Obama administration was not ethically pure. But again, we're talking relatively speaking. They were willing to open an investigation into the son of the sitting vice president. That would never happen uh, to Trump's kids under the Trump administration. Bill Barr would never investigate Ivanka and Jared. And again, we'll come to that in a minute. So that began under the Obama administration and continued under the Trump administration. And that's where we found out about the $2 million tax liability that Hunter was responsible for, he has since paid off. So that's the second federal level investigation. The third one began under the Trump administration in 2018 by a U.S. attorney, David Weiss, appointed by Trump into Hunter's uh, overseas businesses, his consulting work. And this is the kicker. This is again the kicker. It was allowed to continue under the Biden administration. Okay. Also, there the again, Durham investigation was allowed to continue under the Biden. Right. 
100%. So again, I'm not here to stand for Democrats in the sense that I don't think that they're perfect, but in, we're talking relatively speaking. There is no question that by and large, the Democratic Party is by far morally superior to the Republican Party. And this is something that we all need to talk about more. I know you and I do, but people in chat and, and others as well, we need to harp on this. You want to talk about Hunter Biden? Hunter Biden's been investigated three times, and the Biden administration has allowed... They, he, Biden has the authority to fire or demand the resignation of U.S. attorneys, and he allowed Weiss, a Trump appointee, to continue investigating uh, Biden's son. That, again, is an act of superhuman political integrity that we would never get from a Republican. No Republican would ever allow. Can you imagine Trump coming into office and finding out that Obama had opened up an investigation into Ivanka? He would kill it day one. Day one also, and be done. also, there's another difference. Um, it, Hunter Biden's a private citizen. Yes. Yes. Like, like the investigations into Don Jr. and them were would be justified. The Trump organization. Would be absolutely justified and are absolutely justified because they're public officials. They violated. Well, no, not, not Don Jr. Don Jr. was like, I'm talking about the actual investigations that were going on in New York were to their organization. They weren't to the actual kids because of made up stuff. It's because, and I want this to be repeated every single time. The Trumps are not legally allowed to run a fucking charity in New York without oversight because they kept stealing from kids with cancer. Like we, we it'd be a different thing if we're talking about investigating Jared Kushner or Ivanka who are active members of the Trump White House who deserve to be investigated because Jared Kushner got $2 billion from the Saudis. Trump right. got a billion dollars from the Saudis. Six months after the Trump administration ended. Meanwhile, he was basically the special envoy to Saudi Arabia for most of the Trump administration, at least since 2019. And, and where were Republicans on that? Where were Republicans? And how many fucking stories have we gotten from them overcharging for their hotels? Like a Secret dozen? service? Yes. Or what about the Chinese and Japanese trademarks that were streamlined that Ivan for Ivanka's businesses, which were filed either before or during uh, Trump's inauguration? Like, yeah, and also, I, mean, I, I want to also be clear about this thing, too. There appears to be some criminal intent, uh, criminal charges for Hunter Biden around the gun stuff about sure. his inability. He lied. He lied on yeah. that federal form. And if there's criminal penalties, penalty. do it. Because here's the thing. I don't give a shit. Like the last time I argued this with somebody was Rob and he, he was talking something about Hillary Clinton. And my response was lock her ass up too. I don't give a shit. Um, and he would never say that. That's the thing, Mr. What about is, and that's where, I, that's where one of the things that frustrates me about Rob and lecture fan and others like them with the, what about isms, they think they'll get us on the, what about isms, the, oh, yeah, well, you're, you would just defend Hunter Biden. No, I don't care I, if Hunter, like you said, he, he lied on a federal form for that gun purchase, as far as what we know about his pre past drug abuse. If they want to charge him for it, so be it, because the sons of sitting presidents should also not be above the law. But where was that standard when it was President Trump's kids, like you said, who were not private citizens, who were active senior members of the Trump administration, setting White House policy? They didn't they did not uh, divest themselves of their private businesses. Uh, Ivanka has an ownership stake in the Trump Hotel in D.C. Where were all the foreign dignitaries going when they came to D.C.? Trump Hotel. So between the trademarks, Trump Hotel, Jared's Saudi Arabia deal, we're again, we're talking about orders of magnitude disparity. And also orders like what tonight we're talking like like the the close so the numbers that I understand is it was about fifty thousand dollars per year for uh for Burisma, which turned out to be we already know from the first impeachment that's already nonsense. I think we're talking between ten and twelve million. I think twelve million is the upside on some of these deals that they supposed. While in the White House, Jared Ivanka made like eighty four million dollars. Like 60, I saw 64 is what I saw. Is that what it is? 640. <laughs> I saw 640 million. Uh, let me look this up while we're talking here. Okay, because I remember doing the math on this during the first impeachment. He would have had to work for Burisma for like 150 years to, to equal the same salary that they made. And that's even including whether or not they, um, okay. But like, look, we don't know directly because i i think if i'm correct in that article it doesn't say where all their money comes from so even including like 
like this is the thing you go into um you politics especially at the high level and you make a fuck ton of money i think nancy pelosi like the fact that they don't uh, ban stock trading is fucking yeah. criminal there's a level of corruption there too with Pelosi and and certain Democrats as well. But again, for every one that you, every one Democrat that engages in that sort of shenaniganry, you can find two or three Republicans who get busted for the same shit. The it, scene, it, it's it is, it is truly mind boggling that on virtually every sort of crime, it's a weird two to three to one ratio. The Republican Party is just objectively more corrupt. But to your point. I agree. They should ban, uh, you know, the the insider uh, or the the stock trading for sitting members of Congress and their family members. Absolutely, because it's just rife with abuse, and Democrats are guilty of it as well, but not equally guilty. And, right, and that's where make I, it, good. it doesn't. No, make no, it I, I agree. I agree. But I, I guess I'm kind of like you in the sense I'm tired of seeding ground. I try to do some for good faith to show that, like, genuinely, I don't care what happens to Hunter Biden. I mean, besides the, the common care that I give to any human being, right? I don't want anything bad to happen to him, but if he deserves, you know, prosecution and conviction, all for it, fine, don't care. But I'm tired of indulging, and I feel like, again, commentators, Chuck Todd, meet the, I mean, like, so many people are so guilty of this, indulging in the false equivalence. And, and also, just, there's, there, there's something to be mentioned about, like, the humanity of this because hunter biden's business deals and the hunter biden with the massive drug problem that we are well aware of are two separate things the fact that on two separate occasions we've had videos of joe biden legitimately being a supportive father we had the audio that was released a couple months ago of him being like hey man i i love you i don't know what to do but i'm here for you like i i, I love you and they'll need like, help yep yeah, please get like, help like what fucking monster looks at that and goes, yeah, that's going to get up. That's going to hurt my opponent. Like what the fuck, man? That like, that's different. Like should drug Hunter, like Hannity has run this a couple times where he, they have like pictures of the laptop of, of Hunter Biden, like having sex and he keeps playing these on his show. That's not relevant to anything. No, that's shitty as hell. I mean, it really is. I, it's just like, Get out, get over it. Like nobody cares. Um, the party, yeah. the party of family values and Jesus Christ, you they know, hate families, they hate families. They just do. Um, they hate you. Uh, that, that's really all there is to it. But like, that's, that's where, um, it is. So I don't know how much more, Look, the whole point of this is, this is, this is Benghazi 2.0. If you thought like, to be clear, this is, this is the most important point you need to understand for this Republican party, at least in the, in the house. They're going to run on 2024 being the country is worse off under Democrats, period, that a Republican, un, uh, United Republican House, Senate and um, White House is going to make your lives better. So with that in mind, what policies do you think that they are going to implement to make your lives better that would also supplement, that would also go hand in hand with their goal of making con the country worse for them to run on this standard? And when you, you realize that those are the two points, you're going to realize that they're not actually going to do anything to help you. The bills that are going to get passed at this point are essentially just the omnibus packaging bills in order to get things done. And then they're going to be whatever lunacy messaging bills come out of the house because they're going to be like, defund the, the FBI because they actually tried to kidnap Gretchen Whitmer and they did January 6th. Or um, uh, shoot all the migrants at the border because the border is wide open or release all the fentanyl because this is the, the, the other thing, like every time they see a, an article, like, oh, this much fentanyl is Gary. They're like, oh, this is because of Joe Biden. It's like, do we really trust them to be the party of fighting inflation and high gas prices? And like, you remember the baby formula thing? I mean, this see here's the thing even if you take them at face value so let, let's put ourselves in the mind of a of and I, and I mean this at, by its technical definition ignorant right not stupid just ignorant you you are you're a conservative in a red state you don't follow politics religiously you hear a republican say hey we're going to fight inflation fight high gas prices uh whatever the issue may be and you think, okay, well, the, the most powerful man in the country is a Democrat. There are, there are, according to every headline, Democrat majorities in Congress. This is happening on a Democrat's watch. 
okay, we need to we need to switch hands here and maybe because maybe Democrat or Republicans can solve the problem. This is where, you know, to your point, making them vote for shit, putting it out in the and then and then harping on it religiously, endlessly. Like that's why I'm so happy with the new White House Twitter feed. You know, and it seems like Joe Biden overall has just stepped up his messaging game in a way he should have from the very beginning, where he's constantly got shit prepped, where he's calling out Republicans for their hypocrisy. You know, remember when they were tweeting so and so had uh, their PPP loans forgiven? And while that's they're- also like a, an important thing to remember downstream. Part of the reason that Fetterman walloped Oz is because right at the beginning he defined Oz as this goofy outsider who wasn't there. And Warnock never did that to Herschel Walker. Like that's the yeah. difference. Like if you if you're able to do this quickly, you're able to do it. And the other thing with the like another good example is their fixes don't mean anything. How many times when the gas prices first spiked did we hear about the Keystone XL pipeline? Which number one wasn't operational and wouldn't have been operational. It won't for be operational two. even if it was finished. It even was still under construction. It won't be finished till next year. Right, and also it wasn't a producer. It was simply funneled like crude, like like Santar oil from Canada to Mexico. Right, it was never functional to begin with. There are seven different ways that 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 whole thing has been debunked. And also, President Biden has approved, and this is. You know, uh, uh, this is actually runs contrary to his green renewable uh, campaign promises. I understand in short term political pragmatism why he did it. But Biden is not, you know, the 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 climate, um, the climate bill involved in the uh, the bipartisan infrastructure bill and uh, the Inflation Reduction Act. Those were relatively speaking pretty robust climate proposals, still nowhere near what they need to be. But again, relatively speaking. But other than that, Biden's been approving oil permits at a greater rate than Trump. There was like a 34 percent increase for oil producers to drill on federal land under Biden compared to Trump. So this idea that Biden's not doing enough to have these to let these gas uh, companies drill. No, that's a lie. There is no absolutely no federal impediment at this point they got the leases they have they applied for the permit they were granted the permit now it's up to the oil companies to invest in the drilling biden can't force them to drill all he can do is give them permission which he has and those nine thousand permits by the way that comes out to about 12 million acres of federal land and federal land being the only type of land that biden has any control over which by the way Again, sidebar, 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 federal land is the smallest amount of land in this country that is drillable because most land in this country is controlled by states uh, or by private citizens. Biden can't allow companies to, or he can't get permission to oil companies to drill on state land or on private citizen land, only public land. And he's done it. 12 million federal acres that they can drill on. And well, oh, then people say, well, okay, well, it's not the 12 million acres that they want. No bullshit. They applied for the leases. They chose that land. They were granted the leases. Then they applied for permits to drill on the land that they successfully leased, and they got that too. So Biden's giving them exactly what they asked for, and they're still not drilling. That's not Biden's fault. Well, that's the free market. The solution fault. that the Republicans want is they want the president of the United States to nationalize the oil industry. Right. And I'm here for it, baby. Now, of course, yeah. we take an act of Congress and to do I, it. I do yeah. want to talk to this. This is this is kind of like the this I think is the best way to summarize the Biden administration, um, since essentially none of none of his policies are going to pass for the next two years. The Biden administration is not FDR, but it laid the groundwork for the next time that they have a trifecta to do a lot of really good things. They can in, they can invest more into green technology. They can push harder for a child tax credit. They can do more for legalizing marijuana. They can do more for student debt relief. There's a lot of policies that are dipping your toes in that are positive policies that can then be built on in future Congresses. Like that's what it was. And honestly, I think that should have been more of their messaging that like, hey, you like these little uh, tidbits you get us? Give us more, we'll feed you more. Like no, 100%. That like that's like he's right. Those bills are fantastic. It's really nice that Joe Biden gave us the infrastructure bill, which is the largest investment of infrastructure uh, like ever. It doesn't meet the needs of this country. No, but 
it's it's nice that it happened. It's good to see get it in in the first place. Like the the original bill for the three point like when they were talking about the infrastructure, there's certain policies that you can't. The longer you wait, the more expensive it's going to be, just because shit's going to get worse. Infrastructure is one of those. You can't bandage it and be like, oh, it's all good now, because the next time you got to pay more to fix it. There's a hole in your boat. If you don't patch the hole, more holes are going to show up in your boat. And then if you patch one of the four holes, there's still three fucking holes. You may have dealt with a quarter of them, but it's not the end of it. No, no. I mean, I agree. It's definitely, it's potential. It's a potential. The Biden administration has the potential to be a foundation for a subsequent transformative uh, Democratic majority or Democratic administration. Again, once they get that trifecta, although it's going to be hard if we can't pass voting rights legislation uh, because, and here's the other thing too. I mean, again, we could fractal off into a gazillion things, but when we're having this conversation and we're talking about, you know, subsequent elections, all I can think of, and just follow me with this, is Brianna Joy Gray. You know, Brianna Joy Gray? Yes. Despise her. Despise her. I think she, I think she betrayed fundamentally everything that Bernie ever stood for or just pragmatic de- democracy period. I remember Brianna Joy Gray publicly saying things like, you know, the 2016 election doesn't matter. It's no big deal. It's Hillary, whatever. You can pinpoint, we can trace this. We can do a regression all the way back to a single point. If there's, if there's, if there's an argument to be made about any point in modern U S history, which has potentially set this country up for failure it's Trump's presidency, Trump's 2016 victory, and the fact that he was able to cram through three, three Supreme Court justices. Because the more the more v. Harper thing is legitimately terrifying. Independent state legislature doctrine is asinine. It's insane. This idea that you can, for those of you who don't know, independent state legislature doctrine, it basically, proponents of it argue the state legislatures should be able to create voting laws and specifically draw voting maps without any checks and balances on state level, meaning a governor can't veto. And more importantly, state courts can't reject it. Even if the state's constitution says that a governor can veto it or that state courts can review it. That's terrifying. It's stupid. It's ridiculous, but but it's it's terrifying. worse when you combine it with the fact that it gutted the civil rights bill which basically gave the federal government oversight. And they basically said, no, the federal government, if you have an issue with gerrymanders uh, states, you have to take it to the states. So now they're saying you can't take the federal government and you can't take it to the state. Right, right. So, I mean, it's absolutely absurd. And you're thinking, okay, well, worst case scenario then, ruminate, fresh faces, worst case scenario, that would free up every state to gerrymander the hell out of their populations. The problem is, 30 state legislatures are controlled by Republicans. They control the majority of state legislatures because stupidly along the way, we allowed North and South Dakota uh, to be two states. We allowed Monta, you know, <laughs> like, we, like every red state with a population of 50 because Republicans. DC is still not a state. So yeah, DC isn't. Puerto Rico, you know, this idea. I thought this country was founded on the idea of no taxation without representation. And yet look at Puerto Rico. Yeah, D.C. is not a state, and they fight that every step of the way because they know. they. It, this is, it just goes to show Republicans are not interested in playing a game in good faith because they fear that they'd lose a fair fight. So I'm all for Democrats playing more ruthlessly. But I just find it funny that McCarthy tried to offer some sort of vague affirmative message about, okay, we're gonna, we have a plan, and we're going to fight inflation, and we're going to fight high gas prices, and we're going to fight uh, you know, cost of living. The very first, not second, not third, the very first move is to announce a probe into Hunter Biden, the fourth federal level investigation into Hunter Biden. And also Bill Helm, Bill Hemmer, the uh, Fox News host, note what question he didn't ask Jim Jordan. Uh, he, he brought up, he played the devil's advocate a little bit. Well, they can run the clock out on you and you're not willing to subpoena a sitting president. Um, he didn't say, hey, Jim. I understand why you're doing this, but you also said you were going to fight inflation, high gas prices, yada, yada. And it's just, what do you say to the American people who were expecting that to be your first and top priorities? Like that question is just never asked. Can you imagine? 
I mean, Biden gets questions like this all the time. Again, Democrats get questions like this all the time. So it's just funny to me how we grade Republicans on a curve. Everybody does it. We have got to stop doing that. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, and I hope that you did, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe. Also, my link tree is in the description below, so if you have a sec, go ahead and share the love on all my social media accounts. Also, if you want to express an opinion, eternal devotion, or undying contempt, go ahead and leave a comment because we're always looking for feedback. And on that note, I look forward to pondering politics and pop culture again with you very soon.